coming up this week on Ralph and Vicky's Archer's Choice. This is like, I can't even describe the feeling. It's like all of my adrenaline, all of my stress, all of my everything that I have going on and worrying about in my life comes out. No drugs, no alcohol can ever make a person feel this way. Okay, uh, hold it in the middle. Uh, the left, your other left. To the right, just put it in the center. Uh, there. Welcome to this week's Archer's Choice. And this week, we are still back in the backyard of the Bucks. Back in the backyard Backyard the Bucks. Bucks at home, Illinois. Okay, we're hunting at home this week. You know, you It's got, a family you, affair. You, you got a beautiful buck, and now I, it's my I did, turn and a coyote. Hunt. You forget the coyote. You did. Yes. You did, and now we're going to follow me around? Yeah. Yeah? I'll, I'll probably have to do all the work. You know, you still have another tag. I know. Oh, okay. I'm not greedy. No? No. Oh, okay. Well, hey, let's just get going, shall we? Ready to go hunting whitetail? At home. At home. Family affair. Yes. Choice lunch stop. Hmm. Well, a typical fall morning at the Cian Cirillo's house consists of breakfast, checking the latest weather and wind direction, and getting RJ ready for school. Oh, and attempting to unload the dishwasher, but only until Boomer says you can. <laughs> He's a bit in my way. I think you have to move. Don't snore at me. I, I think you have to move out of my way. Yeah, you gotta move out of my way. Come on, watch out. Don't snore at me. Come on, move. I'm trying to do the dishes. Could you move? Move. Come on, move. Come on, move. Come on. I got dishes to do. It's gonna push you. I need you to move your big booty. You need to move for me. Come on, Ooh, let's go. I'm at home, it's time to be mom. RJ needs to get to school, he needs to get to the bus. Well, it's time to head into the office and figure out where we're gonna hunt, how it's gonna go on, and you know what, Ralph is in there on point trying to tell us all where we're going and how it's gonna happen. Okay, I gotta admit, I'm probably the one that, that is the driving force of, of waking up every morning you know, getting out there and, and scouting and, and doing all the things. I, I, I do admit it. You know what I'm talking about. You get in that mode and you just, I, I can't do without. It's in my DNA. We're going on to 33. So we have a ground blind. We could walk the corn in. We walk right down that, where the corn's knocked down by the road. There's that little patch right down into the waterway. Well, do you think it'd be safer to go I think it'd be safer, cause no matter no no matter what, cause we're so close to the corner here. Just come down the along the corner in the hedgerow. They ain't gonna see us with this wind, especially. I picked where we're going. You're gonna pick which way we're okay. gonna go. In. Ground blind. Ground blind. Thirty three. And everyone said thirty three. Everyone. So I have time to go in the office for about an hour and try playing catch up still. All right. Here's the deal. If you go in the office, it's gonna be longer than that. And then all of a sudden you're gonna, do you have all your equipment ready? Yeah, my quiver, I just gotta throw my quiver on my bow. In my backpack I have to find, it's probably in the cage. Is your bow out of your case and everything? No. Oh, so here's the deal. You're gonna go in the office for an hour, then you're gonna go into the cave, get everything ready, and it's gonna be quarter to four. That's not gonna be quarter to four. <laughs> not quarter to four. Quarter to five. <laughs> it will be quarter to five. I just, I'm going to go and make sure I, I have my my Illinois deer tag. I have to make sure I have my hunting license. I got it for turkey season. I just yeah. need to go and find it. That's all. Yeah, it's it's sort of an important thing to have. Okay, fine. I'll go get my stuff ready to get them out. You wonder why I don't have hair? It's because I yank it out on every conversation. But I'm, I'm good with it. Well, we just got up here on the farm, our northwest farm, and uh, the wind's supposed to die down here in a little bit. It's, it's chilly, and we're not complaining. I, we wait for this weather. We look like the Michelin guy's gonna walk climb up in our stands, but the bottom line here is this is what we've been waiting for. The deer, the bigger bucks are getting on their feet, point in hand, 
Yeah, we're gonna tag something. We can't wait for this time of year. We're getting to be wimps up there. It's beautiful. We're sitting on a cut cornfield with a grove of pines. The pines run north and south. We've got very active scrapes. So we're set up here on the downwind side of the scrapes. Hoping that when they come out, they're gonna hit those scrapes and continue going north. With Ralph settling in early in the stand, the deer are already up and feeding in the corn. Vicky is running a little behind and is moving to the stand as fast as she can. It's been a long time since Vicky has tagged out in Illinois, but she's not losing hope. It's a beautiful day compared to what we've had lately. This afternoon, we came out early, actually late morning, we came out and we set up the stand. We've been seeing a lot of good deer running around in this corner here. We've had stands previously in the more in the corner, but we get busted all the time. We came in, there was a doe bedded just behind the stand already, so that's a really good sign. So sit and wait. Hopefully something will come through this afternoon. It'd be really cool. You know, it's taken me a little while to understand it and, and accept it, but the crazy thing is, is, is Vicky's spot on. She hunts hard, but when, when you're a mom, you, man, you got a lot more things going on. So sometimes she may not fill a tag, really none of us may fill a tag on a regular basis in certain areas. But the reality of it is, is when she's at home, I'm pretty proud of her. Not only is she tr she's trying to get into much hunt, as much hunting as possible, but she's also being a mom and a businesswoman a wife, and pretty much takes care of everything. And it's taken me a while to accept that, but the reality of it is, if, if she didn't do that, we'd be in big trouble. Because when it's hunting season, my mind only goes one way. Thanks, Vic. Yeah, maybe not just hunting season. Maybe, my, yeah, maybe it's not just hunting season that my mind goes only one way. But hey, what are you gonna do? It's been a few years since I filled my Illinois deer tag, and again, it, I know why it is. When I'm at home, I'm mom, I'm wife, I'm getting stuff done in the office, and I do my best to get out as often as I can, but normally I'm the one that's getting RJ out on school, and so the morning hunts are usually out for me, and I've tried my best to get out in the afternoons, but you know what? Time and patience is all it's going to take. Ralph has got a lot to do in that office today. I gave him a huge honey-do list, and that's where he needs to stay. In the meantime, I'm heading out to my tree stand. It's dark out, and we are gonna get up in this stand. Now, I'm putting a decoy out, and I'm hoping what's gonna happen is some of those big bucks that we've been seeing out in the field are gonna come in my way. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, this buck shows up. And he's coming in and he's kind of stomping a little bit. And he's checking out the decoy and he can't quite figure out what's going on with him. He's like, hey, you should be moving. Well, he was checking things out. He was actually downwind of us, which means that, you know, my spray, everything else I was doing with my HS stuff is working really good.
but he finally, he came around. I wasn't sure if he'd actually give me that shot. He came around, gave me that broadside shot, and I zipped him with that beam. And He didn't go but, I don't know, 70 yards straight across the field and piled up. <laughs> it's starting to rain. I think he just crashed. He's, he's going to go down right there. Josh, he's coming back out. He's going to die right there. Look at He just came back. He came back on the field. Look at him. He's on the edge of the field. It's starting to rain. It's going to pour rain this morning. Fixing. We have been out here for weeks on him. There was a huge, beautiful club buck over there. He had a young seven with him. I was riding and the seven came up straight down in. I'm thinking, oh man, I wish that club would come in. He wouldn't come in. Oh God. And then all of a sudden, Josh is like, there's a buck, there's a buck. And he came out the direction he was supposed to come out. This is like, I can't even describe the feeling of, you know, it's been a few years. I haven't filled my buck tag in Illinois. Heck, I haven't shot a doe in Illinois. It's not for lack of trying, but I get so excited. I can control myself up to that point. But once I release it and I know I have a good shot on an animal, it's like all of my adrenaline, all of my stress, all of my everything that I have going on and worrying about in my life comes out and I lose it and I start smiling and I start covering my mouth up. It's the most amazing, crazy feeling in the world and the best, I mean, no drugs, no alcohol can ever make a person feel this way. And you know what? He's not the biggest buck I've ever shot, but the adrenaline rush was right there and I now have a freezer full of amazing venison. He comes in all oh, puffed up to the decoy, just and he got straight downwind of us again. We've got a southeast wind. The club buck and the doe are downwind of us. And I thought, it's over with. It's over with. Beautiful 10. <sighs> Hell no, I at home. Thank you. from Vicki. Vicki shot a nice 10 on our own property here, which is awesome. She's had a streak of bad luck here in Illinois. It's kicked her butt for many years, and finally, I'm telling you, she is on cloud 99 plus times, times square it, whatever you do. But the reality of it is, is she got a buck on her property, our property, and she is like, I know we have to get there because she is jumping and I thank God that Hunter Safety Systems has her in a harness because she'd probably walk right off the stand right now. One of the great things about hunting with your husband is that we share so much together. I mean, honestly, we're 24 seven together, almost 365 days a year. When I'm standing there in the stand, in the tree stand, and Ralph pulls up and he's all excited for me. Like, I got so happy and I started crying again because it's awesome to be able to share this with my soulmate. I mean, yes, I torment him a lot, but it's all in love and it's been since day one. Ralphie, thank you so much for being there and supporting me through everything that we do. Look at There's blood everywhere. Look at Look at You know what? He, you know what? He's not the biggest deer we have around no. here, I promise you. I haven't shot, I haven't filled a tag in Illinois since 2011. This guy came in and presented himself just absolutely beautifully. Thank you. Thank you. He's it. He's like, you your back. We didn't have any deer on the property, huh? Yeah. I mean, it was just a pass-through area and he struggled. Now, congrats. I bought this. That's something we can tie it on there. Yeah. Do you have knife? I do have one in my pocket. Oh my gosh, she's prepared. I have one in my pocket. And did you know that in 2011, I think my little Facebook thing is that RJ shot a buck in the door on this day four years ago.
with a shotgun. I will stand across the field. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that cool? What do you mean, wait, what's up? Well, I just got a text from Freddie. It says, JD just shot an eight. I'll text you in a few. Come on. That's what it says. I said, okay, let us know when he has to get you. I, I was just measuring. I got, Freddie just texted me again. It says 10-4. I just got a text. From? Jody? Do you know how to use that phone? Do you need glasses? What's it say? So they, that was Dave Munch. Oh. So Jody just shot one too? Yeah, he shot an eight. You know, when you have an advantage like this, and I say an advantage, you're able to get somewhere at a higher vantage point and glass, especially we, we, we let, you know, we, we text them and said, hey, Freddie, Jody, get out of the stand, um, be as quiet as possible. Because it's not a, a large timbered area, we're able to watch this as they're getting out. And just in case something bumps out. What are you breathing so heavy for? Walking that chisel block field ain't easy, brother. <laughs> you freaking guys. It's even harder doing it in the dark. We just bought Are you like above elevation here or something? Come on. We must be at like 10,000 feet here or something, yeah, aren't we? I don't we? think so. Are we in Colorado? Well, let's go. I don't know if I can get in this. I got stuff to do. I can't sit here all freaking day. You're a good guide. Yeah, I ain't guiding. Put us on a couple deer today. Uh, Vicky got one. Yeah, looks like she killed a nice one. Glad to know somebody can shoot. Uh, where, where do you think, JD? I think it's too low. For some, they may not know who Jody Davis is. Jody Davis used to be one of the biggest catchers for the Chicago Cubs for a long time. You know, and Freddie and Jody came in and they said, you know, they're not sure, they're not sure. So we put the footage in and, and we saw, I mean, that he just he just shot low. <laughs> and you could see the rejection on Jody's. You could just see it. Jody, you're a catcher. Wasn't that low and out of the strike zone? He's going to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, congratulations. Thank you. You know, it's not that I don't put time out. I don't hunt as hard, though, sometimes at home because I'm trying to play catch up with work. And you know what? I am excited about that buck. Yes, you should he, be. He, I, you could tell. I mean, I was just, it, ha it, it does, everyone seems to think that we fill a tag every time we go out, and it doesn't happen that way. So when it does happen, because of all the hours we put out there, well, you, the bottom it's line like, is, <sighs> we, I, I think we sort of lost. A lot of people have lost what hunting's all about. Right. And right. you know, hunting is getting out there. If you get an opportunity, you yep. seize it. And, and I mean, there's times you seize it and there's times you don't. Right. I mean, the reality of it is, is we're human beings. And, and we have to understand that, take a step back, man. Get, get into Enjoy hunting for what nature. hunting's all about. Just Enjoy it and love it and, you know, fill the freezer. It, it, it just just right. do it. Yeah, just absolutely. Get her I done, agree. man. I agree. Well, we hope you come back next week, same time. Same channel. Right here on, on The Archer's, Archer's Choice. Choice.